Thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time to listen to what we have to share with you during this short video segment. Uh, my name is Dr. Pat Zollner. I'm a professor in the Department of Forestry and Natural Resources at Purdue University, and I'm collaborating with others on a research project regarding the conflict between black vultures and livestock here in Indiana. Um, so that's what I'm here to speak with you about. And pictured on this slide, you can see black vultures. To open, I want to make the point that black vultures are not all bad. They actually offer a lot of important ecosystem services. That vultures writ large are sort of nature's garbage men, and the more carrion and roadkill and things like that that are being consumed by vultures, the fewer mammalian scavengers you have in the system. So you have fewer coyotes around, which numerically may cause more problems than vultures, uh, for example. Interestingly, vultures also do a great job of helping keep disease problems from, from raising their ugly heads. There are some great studies in India from where vulture populations have crashed and incidences of diseases have gone up dramatically. So vultures offer important services. Having said that, vultures are also, also provide a source of conflict. Black vultures in particular have, are known to uh, prey on especially newborn livestock. Typically vultures prefer to eat carrion and that's an easier meal and they'll go for that, but they occur in large flocks and as pictured on this slide here, you can see what happens when a flock of vultures find a newborn or in the process of being born calf and if they do go into this predatory mode, it can result in mortality. So that's motivating the need for this research. Interestingly, this is a long known problem in the southeastern US. Places like Florida have wrestled this problem for decades. Here, as you can see from these two maps in Indiana, the population of black vultures in North America have only recently expanded into Indiana. Historically, they were much more a southeastern species. Now, livestock producers here are starting to have to deal with this, and that's part of what's motivating for us studying and understanding this problem here in Indiana. We appreciate the help we're receiving from all of you with doing, conducting this research. So, what options do producers have when they face problems from black vultures? Well. Black vultures, because they are migratory birds, are protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty, and this changes the ease with which lethal control becomes an option. You require a federal permit to do this, and that permit costs $100 annually. The link at the bottom of this page will point you towards resources that you can use to understand how to apply for such a permit, but we also want to emphasize that lethal control may actually not be the most effective strategy. A variety of other tactics have been shown to be effective in some places, and in some cases, for discouraging vulture activity around livestock. Things like harassment, firing out, lighting off firecrackers or laser dis disturbances around vulture roosts, just dispersing the roosts themselves, or as you can see in the lower picture, you're hanging, eff hanging an effigy will sometimes scare vultures away from foraging in an area. The link at the bottom of this slide will point you to a variety of resources describing established means for implementing these kinds of uh, mitigating measures, non-lethal mitigating measures. If you do in fact lose livestock to black vulture depredation, then there is a lot, an indemnity program. You need to contact USDA Farm Services about this. If you're going to get reimbursement for lost livestock, it requires clear and strong evidence of black vulture depredation. The two links at the bottom of this slide will point you towards resources that are useful in understanding how to apply to this program for an, an indemnity claim revolving around black vulture depredation. Speaking of doing so, if we want to have strong evidence, we need to understand what depredated livestock, what characteristics describe depredated livestock, and that's part of the research that we at Purdue and our collaborators from the USDA are undertaking. We're looking at trying to define practical tools that can help to control black vulture depredation. So the beginning in the fall of 2020, we started looking at recently killed livestock and control calves and deploying them to compare from a necropsy perspective, what happens? So as this picture in the lower right shows, vultures typically, whether it is a stillborn calf or a calf they killed, will start their consumption in the face and at the rear of the animal. Our collaborators with the Animal Disease Diagnostic Lab at the Southern Indiana Purdue Ag Center are doing a great job of working through these samples, and this is something we need your help with. So if in the coming calving seasons, you feel like you have a calf that has experienced depredation, please call Marion Wall. She's the PhD student leading this project. Her phone number is listed on this slide. Report this calf, and we'll come pick it up and use it as part of our study to better understand what can help us distinguish depredated from scavenged calves. Other things that we have going on with our research, very soon, sometime early in 2021, we will be reaching out via email to lots of people, asking them to fill out an online survey to help us understand the extent and the scope of problems that 
cattle producers or livestock producers at large in Indiana are experiencing with losses to black vulture depredation. So please respond to that survey. I know surveys can be irritating, but your help is greatly appreciated. Other things we have going on. In the fall of 2020, we started deploying GPS tags on vultures. You can see one of our traps, one of our trapping locations, and you can see us deploying tags on the birds here. So if you see black vultures flying around with these numbered tags on them, those are some of the birds that we caught this past fall. And for a handful of them, we put these GPS tags on. The GPS tags allow us to develop maps like this, showing where a vulture moves around the Indiana landscape. This is not just us geeking out about how black vultures use the landscape. When we get good baseline data on how they're moving on their own, then we can start to implement some of those mitigating measures, the non-lethal measures, and assess how they change their movement patterns in response to those deploying something like an effigy or implementing roost uh, dispersion. And that will help us better understand how to manage this problem across the state. In conclusion, this is a collaboration that's being led by Marion Wallace, a PhD student at Purdue, but it involves a lot of help from USDA FIS, Wildlife Services, um, and some funding from the US Fish and Wildlife Service as well, and numerous collaborators from a variety of agencies who have made this work move forward. If you have questions about this, Marion Wall, her email is on this slide. She is the grad student to email about this. Her cell phone number is there. And there is a link to a short one-page webpage that describes a little bit more detail of what we're pursuing with this project. Thank you very much for your time.